Hey guys, it's Dean here. It is vlog 13 and it is May 11th on Monday. Hope you guys have had a great start to the week. And for today's episode actually is sparked by a recent conversation that I had with a friend and it was on universal basic income and how this has kind of been a little bit of a test for people in North America and a lot of other countries across the world on what it might be like to have universal basic income. Um, there's pros and there's cons. I think the pros is that if you are given enough money to cover your basic needs, that's great. I think the con, and I think a lot of people have been experiencing this through COVID, is finding meaning. I want to first take one <clears throat> moment to just thank everyone who's on the front lines of fighting COVID, all the health professionals that are sacrificing their life every day in combating this absolutely wicked disease so thank you to everyone out there um and yeah in regards to universal basic income or ubi for short i think you know a lot of people have gone on ei or in canada it's serb um yeah, i think it's COVID emergency relief benefit. I think that's what it's called. Um, and I think in this time, a lot of people obviously are missing work and the way life was, but there's been a lot of time that people have been taking to reflect. And I hope that employers are going to be more open in the future moving forward to a balance on war like an actual work-life balance on working part of the time from home and then part of the time in the office um i think if anyone's been doing a commute and you know they probably have enjoyed not doing the commute during this time um, and they've had you know some extra time at home it's not all sunshine and rainbows being at home all the time but you know having some time at home there has been some benefits I think that has come come out of this and I think the con to UBI is that people have to spend time now finding meaning more meaning than what their life's purpose was prior to COVID. I think a lot of people, especially in North America, have been in a, a rat race and have been just on autopilot going day in, day out, clocking in, doing stuff, clocking out and not taking a moment to really maybe reflect on what gives you life. Um, and I understand that sometimes you gotta just work and survive and, you know, make ends meet for your family. And, um, but I, I think this is, this is given people time to reflect. And I hope that what's next for you is something that might be a little terrifying but maybe really excites you and is just a new change that is hopefully going to push you out of your comfort zone because when you're out of your comfort zone and feeling uncomfortable that's typically when you grow as well kind of the anti-traditional school approach of you fail and you get a grade and it kind of teaches you to not fail or to feel bad when you do fail 
and that's not the case in the real world when you are out and <clears throat> often the worst case isn't as bad as you really think it is and there's tons of fear setting exercises out there to help demystify and de-escalate some fears that you might have whatever they are um but yeah i think just people should hopefully spend some of this time reflecting on meaning and what excites you and gives you life and hopefully you can create and do more for not just yourself but for for other people um a good way to start is to help someone offer help to anyone and intrinsically you actually get a lot more out of it sometimes than what you are providing to someone else so um <clears throat> start there start with family members or friends and just just go out from there um but yeah i think that this covid has kind of caused us to hit pause and and reflect um And I think when trying to think of things that excite you or give you life, I've been phrasing things in those specific terms as opposed to follow your passion or something that makes you truly happy because those things are at least like happiness is ephemeral. It's going to fade. I think you should still aim for doing something that does give you happiness. But something that excites you, something that gives you life, <clears throat> I think there's more feelings that are attributed into that. And um, speaking of happiness, I have here a book that I've recommended in couple of previous blogs, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. Um, what I've done is I've actually created a legend in the earlier pages of the book and wrote down pages that popped out at me and then a brief little, you know, few words to describe what that page is about that stood out to me. And from, from page 423, to 444 um, talks about happiness in many different ways and actually a really interesting part is he talks about the biochemistry effects of happiness and from a biological chemistry standpoint happiness is just the chemicals in your body um, that are released. And actually, I'm going to just go to that page because it's really interesting. So 432. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> So they, they have a interesting analogy and they say here, some scholars compare human biochemistry to an air conditioning system that keeps the temperature constant come heat wave or snowstorm. Events might momentarily change the temperature, but the air conditioning system always returns to the temperature to the same point. Some air conditioning systems are set at 25 degrees Celsius, others are set to 20 degrees. Human happiness conditioning systems also differ from person to person. Um, on a scale from 1 to 10, some people are born with a cheerful biochemical system that allows their mood to swing between levels 6 and 10, stabilizing with time at 8. Such a person is quite happy, even if she lives in an alienating big city, loses all her money in a stock exchange crash, and is diagnosed with diabetes. 
other people are cursed with a gloomy biochemistry that swings between 3 and 7 and stabilizes at 5. Such an unhappy person remains depressed even if she enjoys the support of a tight-knit community, wins millions of the lot like in the lottery, and is as healthy as an Olympian uh, Olympic athlete. athlete. Indeed, even if our gloomy friend wins 50 million this in the morning, discovers the cure for both AIDS and cancer by noon, makes peace with <laughs> between Israelis and Palestinians that afternoon, and then in the evening reunites with her long lost child who disappeared years ago, she would still be incapable of experiencing anything beyond level seven happiness. Her brain is simply not built for exhilaration, come what may. So just a really neat example of how happiness varies from person to person. It's not a one-all, catch-all, it'll apply for person A and person B. Each person has their own um, air conditioning system, and it's just chemicals that are fluctuating between your body. I'm trying to figure out what chemical, I, I, serotonin is one of them. Um, serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin. Um, very interesting scientific approach to happiness. Um, and they talk about a lot of other really neat points in this book. So anyways, highly recommend picking that up. But how that relates to UBI, um, I think that yeah, now's a good time to question what you're doing as like a litmus test on is this what you want to continue doing? And starting something new actually isn't that hard once you once you start. Try not to stay in your head for too long.